Moving on, our next session is going to be a panel discussion focus on the future of shopping. This will be led by Mr. Jack Madrid. Jack has more than 20 years of experience in general management in Southeast Asia across different sectors, which include digital media, e-commerce, broadcast media, commercial banking, venture capital, and BPO. He is an expert in the field of business development, strategic planning, and general management. He spent six years at Citibank as vice president, eight years at Ayala Corporation as managing director, three years in Dell as a director, and almost two years in Yahoo Philippines uh, as country manager. Jack is a graduate of uh, the University of Pennsylvania, the Wharton School in 1982. At present, aside from being the country manager of Multiply, he is also one of the board directors of Internet and Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines, IMAP, and the president of Digital Commerce Philippines, or DCOM. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Madrid. Hey, thanks very much for that, uh, for the introduction. It's always great to be here in IMAP. Uh, this event keeps getting bigger and bigger since I first attended it. So the topic for uh, this session is e-commerce, e e e uh, specifically the future of shopping. And uh, before I introduce uh, my, my panelists, um, just to just a bit of a background, you know, we have 35 million Filipinos on the internet as of today, spending increasingly uh, amounts of time on online, almost two hours a day, and increasingly from uh, private access. Not only are, uh, when, when I was uh, when I joined the industry two years ago, uh, it was I recall 75 percent were accessing the internet from internet cafes. But today, they are logging on from uh, the comforts of their house or their office. Therefore, it would be uh, logical to think that online shopping would be a primary activity, given all the time that online Filipinos spend on the internet. However, only three to five percent of Pinoy internet users have actually purchased something online in the past six months. So why why is this? And this is some of the this is one of the topics that we'll be tackling uh, today. Uh, and and I guess one of the questions that we will be attempting to answer is: Are there some inherent barriers to this seeming reluctance of people buying online? Because it's only three to five percent. Uh, could there be issues with with respect to payment infrastructure? Are there concerns on shipping, uh, or maybe the anonymity of the internet is still not is not still uh, not very comfortable for the uh, typical internet user? So, to help me uh, discuss and shed some light on this issue, uh, I want to introduce my, uh, my my panelists for this afternoon, not in any order, but uh, R.J. David, the founder and CEO of Sulit.com.ph, the leading. Filipino website, so thank you very much for joining me, RJ. Um, one of my other close friends, uh, who is uh, French, but is actually Filipino at heart, is Mr. Frederick Levy, a digital ver veteran uh, from the agencies, uh, from various agencies in Paris, uh, but now uh, very much entrenched building uh, what is already a very big uh, deal site, Cash Cash Pinoy. He's the CEO and one of the co-founders. Welcome, Fred. Uh, next, uh, another really good friend of mine, uh, my counterpart, uh, who runs the Jakarta office of Multiply.com, Daniel Tomiwa. Welcome to the Philippines, Daniel. Always a pleasure to welcome you here. Uh, Daniel has a, is, a, is, a, is a veteran of the digital industry, and before uh, assuming the reins of the Multiply business in, in Indonesia, he had, uh, he had a, almost a decade of uh, experience working in wireless applications as well as... Uh, uh, also being uh, part of the MTV team in Indonesia. And last but not least, uh, Oliver Segovia, the CEO and founder of ava.com.ph, uh, a very fast-growing, members-only, fashion, beauty, and lifestyle shopping site. So these are my panelists. And I guess, guys, welcome, on, you know, welcome to the panel. And uh, you know, we're going to be grappling with this issue of why, despite all the bullishness around e-commerce, we've, you know, we've been trying to figure out when is this tipping point going to happen in, in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia. Uh, we've been predicting that tipping point for, the, for a couple of years now, but yet, uh, if you look at total online uh, retail spend uh, of, of in the Philippines of one, one trillion pesos, and I'm often asked, 
the size of the e-commerce market uh, in, in, in the Philippines. And while we don't have any official published data, our own uh, back-of-the-envelope computation suggests that it's only 5 billion pesos, which is well below 1% of total Philippine retail. This compares to 3% across Asia-Pacific, 10% in the United States, and according to the research agency Forrester, they predict this to grow to 15 to 20% of total global retail. But yet in the Philippines, we are well below 1%. So why, why is this? Um, and I guess just as a backdrop, um, it would be interesting to see the evolution of digital transactions in the past uh, 200 years. And in the first 190 years, it took a long time from the time that Samuel Morse discover, uh, invented the telegraph all the way to uh, when uh, mobile phones became popular 19, in, the mid, in the mid 1980s. So it took all that time to get from telegraph to telephone to credit card and mobile phone. But the pace of innovation in the past 20 years has been much more accelerated and rapid. From the time that QR codes were invented, online banking, the internet, all the way to the launch of the iPhone in 2007, and now mobile payments. So what does this suggest? It suggests that technology is going to continue to drive uh, the advent of e-commerce. And this is one of the burning issues and topics that we're going to be discussing with the panel. So guys, let's get this conversa conversation started. Um, I will now join you. And, and I guess one of the things that I wanted to discuss is uh, why are there some why is there some reluctance for online Filipinos to shop online? RJ, you've been doing this for a couple of years. Do you want to start off uh, by answering that question? So Jack, um, I'm just going to add um, to what Steph said earlier. So there, Steph mentioned the three factors um, that will drive people to shop online, which is uh, the price, the selection, and the convenience. In the convenience part, I want to put out uh, he mentioned trust as part of the convenience part. I want to put it out um, in, in the sense for, for the Philippines. So trust is still a big issue in, in our country. Um, basically, uh, yeah, the anonymity of the internet, you don't know what you're dealing with, is a huge barrier that we're um, uh, noticing in, in, in our website. Um, aside from uh, the trust issue, we also have the, the payment issue. So payment is also a big barrier. Um, most of the users of our website in Sulit, uh, they do it in a, what we call research online by offline manner. So they're just using the, the website um, to search for the products they're going to buy. But in terms to answer the um, problem of trust and payment, they have to meet with the buyers. You raise a very uh, valid point. I mean, Asians in general, and, and including Filipinos, do like to know who they're buying from. The sukit mentality is, is still very much there, whether you're offline or online. Do you see that in your own experience, Fred? Um, actually, just to complete what you were saying earlier, um, you said there is 35 million of Filipino on internet. That's the first figures that we could challenge Quotes. Why? Because when you see the different figures that people are pushing, there is a lot of study, but usually people use the Yao Nielsen one. The problem is on these 35 million people, um, they use, for example, to compute people who come once in a month on internet. On a, uh, on a business point of view, that's not a client that, because you know that the key data is your conversion rate, meaning the number of visits versus the number of visits who buy something. So in fact, it's not 35 million. I mean, on a business point of view, it's probably a lot less. Now, we know for a fact that uh, D and E people, which are the number one, as of today, of Filipino population, uh, represent the big majority of people on internet. I think if I remember correctly, A, B, and C1, C2 is around 40%. As of today, let's be clear, it's still something up to buy online, meaning, D and E don't buy online. I'm talking about transaction online because around the table now you have different system. I mean, uh, you have the Craigslist model. The transaction is not fully online. You have the complete opposite, which is super private club membership. 
you have the flash sales. Multiply is even something else. The, the I create my own shopping. It's in the middle between the transaction is online, not really online. It's moving fully to online. I'm just saying it's very different model. So as of today, I think on the pure transaction online, it's probably only ABC. At least on Cash Cash, I know it's ABC 1C2. So that means it's not 35 millions we are talking about. From our own computation, we are talking more about 17 million potential buyers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, as of today, once again, if you talk about pure transaction online, it's not in province. As of today, everybody talk about e-commerce since few years because of this booming of this group buying, flash sales, whatever. And we know that this business is born with what? People buying restaurants in Manila. I caricature them, but more or less. So that means you're not really talking to province people as of today. You're really talking in terms of e-commerce transaction to Metro Manila, which is, again, from the 17 million, you cut. It's less, probably, are you, maybe. Are you suggesting, Fred, that the internet penetration is not as... Uh, widespread across even here um, two cities? I'm just saying, uh, Jack, it's e-commerce. Personally, I don't care about a guy who come once in a month on my website. What interests me is the guy who come every week, or even better, every day. Because it's this one I'll have a chance to sell something. So when we say it's 35 million and in fact only a very small percentage, no. As of today, e-commerce in Philippines talk to a smaller, really smaller number of people, probably more, maybe more six to nine million. So it's not so bad, considering that in 2010, there was no e-commerce. I'm not saying Craigslist process. Of course, Solid makes transactions since long time, but pure transaction online, there was nothing since this Ensogo, Cash Cash Pinoy, Deal Grocer, and Over System. So I would say, actually, no, I think it's very encouraging. And there is also another last point, just to finish that. Um, at the DCOM, we used to talk a, 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 a lot about the fact that it's not only e-commerce uh, group buying, it's everything. And for example, a lot of people used to forget airline company. Cebu Pacific already sell a lot online. It's tricky to get figures, but the one we are herding, we're talking about more than one billion US doll per year online transaction. And Cebu Pacific Online, it's what, maybe five years ago, six years ago? I don't really remember. So that means these guys today in Philippines are able to generate one billion of US doll of pure online transaction because in this case it's buy online or don't get the one peso fare. So I'm just saying it's, I think, really more optimistic than what we were saying. At the end of the day, it's quite significant. Other business, you were saying 5 billion peso. I'm sure you were taking out all the travel industry. Yes. I mean, 5 billion peso in an industry who didn't exist 18 months ago? Uh, come on. Not so bad. Clearly, we're still at the nascent stage, but clearly also the signs are there that this is, we are approaching that, that tipping point. So let's hear from uh, the Indonesian perspective, uh, Daniel. Um, um, I'm just afraid to screw it up. It's just going that way, and the worst thing you can do is just screw it up. Um, we have 80 billion US dollars of SME transactions a year, and only 1.5 billion is going through internet. And it's up for grabs. It's that simple. So whether you process it through a payment system or social network, the money is flowing person to person, offline, online. It's just creating a new habit, and it will come. So how you shape that, um, how the high school kid going into college gets a new habit of buying online is definitely going to happen. But to which channel he actually goes into uh, is, is the race. So that's, that's a snapshot of what's happening in, in Indonesia. The challenge, of course, with uh, same as Philippines, with so many islands, is uh, logistics and delivery. Only... 12 months ago, 18 months ago, the banks have actually opened up to uh, discuss further uh, initiatives of uh, supporting the industry. Um, and again, thanks to the airline, airline industry. So you can see now new models of, of, of how people use existing platforms. 
trying to create a better living for themselves. And I think in this area, Indonesia, Philippines, or Southeast Asia, excluding the uh, more modern, advanced countries in Southeast Asia, <coughs> there's one common, uh, common um, driver, which is struggle, which is chaos. And people don't want to sit back and, and leave it to the government to provide jobs or anything. They know they're smart. Everybody's smart. They have to do something. And the best, fastest, easiest way is to use the internet. And that's what we're seeing all over the place consistently, especially in Indonesia as well. So one thing I'm hearing so far is that payments, uh, the state of payments infrastructure is certainly uh, a big driver, and in, in some cases, in some markets, uh, a barrier to increasing uh, the share of e-commerce versus total retail. Um, I'd like to hear maybe uh, your own experiences in terms of, uh, you know, is it 50% is it cash uh, as a payment method in your, in your experiences? Or are we seeing more credit card uh, transactions? Well for, well, for Alva specifically, we actually opened up a COD option uh, a couple of months ago, but 90% of our transactions still happen on credit cards, which I guess, which I was very surprised because I was thinking, hey, it's fashion, it's going to be harder for people to buy online and hence they want to do COD. But a lot of our customers, the huge majority actually use COD, which is probably a function of the target demographic that we chose for ourselves. Uh, so I think it's been pretty interesting. At least for us, we don't see payments uh, being the option, but maybe that's very specific to our business model and to our target market. Uh, but to answer your earlier question, Jack, on uh, why aren't we seeing a huge boom yet in e-commerce here, I think a useful place to start answering that question is to look at the history of e-commerce in the U.S. And uh, I think one great person who's done a lot of work here uh, is Geoffrey Moore, uh, in the book Crossing the Chasm. Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of Geoffrey Moore. Uh, if you haven't get that book, Crossing the Chasm, anyone in the technology business uh, should read that book. It's like the Bible. Uh, and what he explains there is that technology adoption always happens along waves. Uh, it starts off with the visionaries, i.e. the geeks and the nerds, uh, and then goes on to the early adopters, uh, which I think we are in now. Uh, it's the people who are comfortable buying online, who are buying online, and then moves on to what he calls the late majority. So this is basically when 50% or more of the population adopts a new technology. And for us to make the leap, it's, that's why he calls it a chasm, because to leap from early adopters to the late majority means that a lot of things have to happen. Uh, consumers' habits have to change. On the supply side, the big companies and the big brands have to get an e-commerce. That's why if you look at the U.S. back in the late 90s, you saw Amazon doing its IPO and pushing e-commerce. You saw Boo.com and Webvan and uh, Pets.com driving e-commerce in the U.S. Uh, there was a bubble, yes, uh, all of them failed. But what eventually happened was that a lot of people were used to buying online. They were exposed to the service. They were exposed to these new products that they can get straight to their doors. Uh, maybe it, it had to take a bubble in the U.S. Uh, to do that. But I think in the Philippines, to really drive growth in e-commerce, there's no doubt SM must get into it. Rustans must get into e-commerce as well. Uh, and you know, it's pretty awesome that there's a lot of guys like Multiply and Sulit and Cash Cash uh, who are really driving that. Uh, but I think until the big guys get into it as well, uh, and a lot of new startups uh, run their own e-commerce site, uh, we're not going to see that explosion that we want for the industry. Um, let's, let's tackle uh, another reason for, you know, a driver for uh, the abandonment of shopping carts, which is shipping. Um, would uh, any observations, uh, Fred, uh, what has been your experience with Cash Cash Pinot in terms of uh, uh, local shipping models? Stefan can also testify about that. All the big player traditional retail who jump into e-commerce put a big slap in their face. It's a complete different business model. Uh, the rules are not the same at all. The famous 80%, 20%, you know, you make 20% of your, 80% uh, of your sale with 20% of your product. It's completely different. I'm sure you know the long tail and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just saying that, uh, I don't see personally, if I was SM, why the 
I would push e-commerce in the country. I don't have any reason to do it. I don't have any reason. Why? It's very convenient for me. The system is very good. Actually, these guys, they just bother me. This guy, they just keep my cut my margin. That's all they do. For me, the boom will happen from guys like us or other guy. Rocket is here. Everybody in the room talk about the rocket. They could be the one. They could be the one. Or the, the, the switch of, of, uh, of multiply, who is definitely big, could be the, 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 the boom. Um, me, I think the e-commerce will boom when people will have a reason to use it. I give you an example. In France, uh, or in Europe, UK, US, the same thing. Uh, grocery online is a big business. Yeah. It's a very big business. Why? Because it's a pain in the ass to make your grocery. So grocery online is a big business. But does grocery online would be a big business in Philippines? I don't put two cents on that. Everybody has someone to make the grocery for you. Culturally speaking, it's nice to make the grocery. You go to the mall in family. It's a pleasure, etc., etc. So in this case, it will not work. I mean, people, why this e-commerce ramp up with Cebu Pacific? Because you want to get the one peso fare, it's online or it's nothing, buddy. You don't want, okay, you don't have it. Why the group buying and so go and co ramp up this business? Because you want that discount, it's online or it's nowhere else. So your fear, uh, you need to be reassured because you don't have trust. Uh, the payment system, you are not really, okay, but you want the deal, you have to make the effort. And they want the deal, so they made the effort. So my two cents just on that point is, if we wait the explosion from Rostan, from, uh, and Rostan is different, they have problem of distribution, right? So maybe it would be interesting for them, but some SM, landmark of the other one, they will not do it. Maybe they will put just a nose on that, but that's all. So I think the argument was, mis was misrepresented because I didn't say that SM was going to succeed in e-commerce. I just said that the big players need to get into e-commerce for consumers to start getting into the space as well. So you know, it could be SM, it could be Lazada, uh, but somebody has to play the role that Amazon did in the US, in the Philippines. And maybe they won't make money for the next 10 years, and that's fine. But everyone else in the market will start benefiting because they're going to be investing in the infrastructure, the advertising and all the things that are needed to change consumers' habits. So I think, I think we agree with each other on that point. You say that then. Huh? <laughs> so let's, let's talk about shipping. Yeah, um, Freddie, you want to start that? Just, yeah, uh, okay. It's true, there is one advantage and one inconvenient in, in the shipping uh, in Philippines. The official public shipping is not very performant. Everybody know that. Yeah. So that's the inconvenient uh, in US or in Europe. You already have a very strong public service delivery, which is, of course, higher quality than what we can experience here. But the positive point is it's so bad that since a long time, there is a lot of private company who propose alternative solution. So, I mean, at least there is option. I would make two differences. Metro Manila, it's logistically speaking, uh, there's a lot of option in terms of shipping. In terms of logistics, personally, you need your own team. We have our own team. But in terms of shipping, there is a lot of option. The problem is as soon as you leave Manila uh, and you go nationwide, you have more or less free player. It's a different story. Because these free players uh, lead more or less the business. Uh, they are more or less performant, different on the region. So your, ship, your logistic team must also see which one is the most performant depending on the items, depending on the destination. I mean, it's a lot of tedious work. Uh, so to answer to your question, there is option, definitely. You cannot say that there is no alternative. No, there is option. It probably requests more work uh, and more energy um, because you have to balance uh, this system. Um, Pricing, pricely speaking, definitely it could be really optimized. They are still in a monopolistic situation, so they don't really see the advantage to decrease the cost. There is new player like Zen, who is a member of DCOM, who jump in the story also to bring another approach, uh, more connected to the specific need of online business, but it's pioneer step. Um, let's not forget something, the number one strength of Amazon is the logistic. 
it's not the choice, it's not whatever, uh, the SEM, the SEO, well, yeah, it's good, of course, but the number one stress, it's to buy it, you get it tomorrow in your house. And actually, even today, we're talking with Stephen the other day, now it's like uh, you have it even tonight. Recently, they bought a factory with robots and, and stuff like that to increase their logistic capacity. So this is the real war. Uh, and they probably are the one, if you ask me, them and the bank, they are probably the two ones who have the real leverage to make the e-commerce moving. I'm sure you can talk about the Indonesia payment system. We are very lucky, actually, in the Philippines. Uh, on the contrary of what a lot of people think, we have more than 30, 40 payment systems. Very original. We can tap from A to D to pay something. In Indonesia, it's a complete different story. So, Daniel, you want to talk, talk about, uh, you know, you have more competitors uh, in the Indonesian e-market e scene. Uh, yes, yeah, a little bit different um, payment. We were a little behind. Um, the variations are still uh, much less than the Philippines. Um, many more big companies, invest investment companies coming into the market. Um, it's 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 cowboy country now. Um, <laughs> but again, different different um, pos uh, different positioning, different um, different objectives. Um, we all, as an industry, look at each and every strategy as, at this moment, still complementing because it's so new that you can introducing to anybody the mass majority of Indonesia the first transaction is happening. It probably would have happened this year or last year, first transaction online. Um, so it's it's that new. Um, <clears throat> the challenges again we talk about logistics, but I think we have the, the, the logistics is a bit better from what I'm hearing. We have uh, companies that actually reach out to the furthest uh, provinces and to the smallest uh, towns that don't even have house numbers. And it, it's just marked as blue house, second house next to the mosque. And they get the product there. Um, or we have a, 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 a guy who guards the East Timor and Indonesia um, Border who, who shops every day using his phone and buys one T-shirt today, and next day buys a pair of glasses, and uh, they have to deliver every day, and that happens, and we get good feedback on that. So, uh, logistics is, I think, is much better than what payments is at this moment. The options of, of payments, and there's so many new payment systems coming up on board, and uh, the thing is, um, they don't have traction at all right now. So again, the big players are the banks. Um, credit card still very low, but. It was, it was always been an ATM play. So they see ATM as the replacement of their computer screens. So uh, that's the assumption. But when we went to the market, uh, internet payment has taken over very quickly from, from ATM, just over the past nine months. So that, that's how fast things are moving right now. And um, just another um, uh, uh, experience I, I, I can share uh, how fast it's moving is um, a few months ago, about six, seven months ago, we were at this conference in Bali. We were talking to some advertisers um, who came up to me and asked me, so h how do I use this for my brand? Because advertisers, agencies are there. Um, as an industry, we, we try to educate the, the, the advertisers uh, about uh, e-commerce being the, the last step of completing the 360 degree um, uh, journey is when at this stage in Indonesia, uh, brands have have accepted that they have someone focused and they're paying full time yeah. to manage a Facebook account. You have a social network manager now in small media and enterprise or even big brands. They have a proper digital team. And basically all, all they're creating is noise. A lot of noise on Twitter, Facebook, apps and everything. And then we just say, look, we just complete the last mile, which is like, you want this? There's so much noise out there. What we do is uh, you just put a UTM tag, URL, and basically leads to your page which says buy now. The logistics is taken care of. The payment is taken care of. So it's that important right now to integrate what e-commerce is into any campaign because there's a buy now button there. And that made a lot of sense. And in the last six months, uh, the discussions to even now shipping out computers, laptops, refrigerators, everything has picked up so fast um, uh, that it's it's, it's moving um, uh, in a real super speed uh, at this moment. So logistics and payment, the, the, the good part of what Indonesia uh, acceptance is forgiveness. And I think in Philippines as well, you don't get it in one day, it's okay. <laughs> I understand. 
you still have the mentality of you ordering a shirt in, we have a bar or a batik in Indonesia, you can't really figure out the size, you get it and say, it doesn't fit and say, okay, my cousin can wear it, it's fine, I'll still buy. Again, it's the struggle of getting access to the product. And we see outside of Jakarta, people ordering, outside of uh, uh, Java actually, our, our orders outside of Java are growing so fast that um, they have money out in the provinces right now. So uh, that's the big growth that we're, we're, we're seeing. And it's real, real orders, real transactions. The issue is no longer, I know probably the service can be better, but can I pay $50 more to get the product day after tomorrow? It's not an issue of how much the price the Samsung Galaxy S3 is. It's I'll pay another 50 bucks, I need tomorrow. Or my, my name to me is from Manado, is just below Philippines where people like to dress smart, go out and party a lot. The issue is they shop Monday and Tuesday, they have to have the product on Thursday because they want to go out to the malls and the boulevard with their new shoes, new glasses and everything. Every week they shop because it's not available out there. So you talk about logistics, it's covered. Payments a little bit uh, left behind, but I guess it's the market that is adaptive to what we can offer them as an option to go shopping. So, so Daniel, you sound uh, pretty bullish that uh, in Indonesia there yeah, is a the lot of pent up demand it. for for online shopping. If we could just get over the hurdles of both logistics and and, and payments, um, I think everybody in the industry understands the potential now. So it's at the end of the day, the consumer will win. That's what I feel. We feel bullish about the whole industry. The consumer will win. Prices, your comparisons, and everything will be out there. So um, it, that's why I just uh, when I when I open this, I, my my opening remarks, I'm just afraid to screw it up. Um, it's just don't screw it up. You'll do fine. Well, let's let's uh, switch gears a little bit. I mean, you know, from the previous presentations, we've heard about how technology and the growth of uh, tablets and smartphones are going to be giving uh, shoppers and merchants a lot of powerful powerful tools, not just to uh, uh, shop, but also to establish uh, stores. Uh, because everyone technically with, with this, all this technology has a, a shop in their pocket, so to speak. So in a sense that uh, merchants of all sizes, uh, we see a leveling of the playing field, wherein a small merchant and SME can challenge the, the traditional retail giant. So um, this opens up a lot of opportunities for Filipino entrepreneurs. So perhaps RJ, you know, you are a hardcore entrepreneur. Perhaps you can share some insights for those in the audience who want to establish their first online business. Maybe the uh, advantage of the entrepreneurs today is that they already have platforms like Sulit, like Multifly. That um, the problem with starting up your own store by yourself is the fact that after you finish the store, nobody will come to your store. Of course, you have to market it. So uh, um, it's not. Uh, it's that that's the, the 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 real issue. It's very easy to set up a store. There's thousands of script available. You can just click it. It will install for you. You just upload all your all your um what they call this um products, and you have a store. But the problem now is getting someone to view that store so that they will buy from it. So the uh the advantage having the platforms like Sulit and Multiply is it. When you post something in Sulit, when you post something in Multiply, there are already available buyers looking at, at those sites. So as of now, you just put up your um, your products there, and for sure you can expect calls coming in. So as of now, uh, if you don't know how to market things, there are already platforms available. So RJ, aside from I mean, you know, you're you're one of the uh, you're you're on the cutting edge of you know SEO and SEM, which is really a large part of the uh, success of sulit.com.ph. Uh, aside from that, any other tips for our uh, buddy entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs out there on driving traffic and improving conversion rates? I, I, I always believe on content. So uh, being an SEO guy, uh, you, you have heard it a lot of times, content is king, and I believe it's true. Maybe the, the only advantage with Sulit is we automate everything for our for your users, so the system automatically optimize uh, the site for you. Um, it's just content for, for SEO. Um, you've heard for those techie guys here, you heard, you've heard of the Panda update, the Penguin update. Um, the search engines are moving into a more content-centric um, algorithm. So before, you can do a lot of um, 
black hat techniques that even you don't have the content, you can get traffic. Now, it's more on content. So it means if you post your products online, if you only have one sentence about your product, don't expect a lot of, a lot of traffic from it. It really means that you have to put content, um, good content to your product. Oliver, what about from you know from your uh, content curated shopping site? Uh, would you share the same observations as RJ? Content is important in uh, establishing loyalty and driving driving up the conversion rate. I completely agree with that. And for us, the way we view content is the products themselves are the content. Uh, it's the brands uh, that we sell. Uh, yeah, we have an online magazine uh, as well, uh, and I guess it completes the whole shopping experience. Uh, and of course, it has to be integrated uh, across all the platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and the like. Uh, but we take a slightly different view in terms of you know, what we treat as content because our goal isn't to drive eyeballs. Our goal is to drive purchases uh, for the right customers uh, with high customer values over the long term. So before we conclude, uh, Fred, did you want to add something? Yeah, just to, to add about what you say, Con content is king. It's true. But um, money also matters a lot. No, I mean, yes. I'm I just saying. I think we know who you're talking about, Fred. No, because um, uh, we've, we've the, the partner at Cash Cash Pinoy are the same one of NetBooster, the, the biggest digital agency in the country. And um, we saw a lot of people, I mean, some of the very big brand, or even sometimes uh, entrepreneur like LG met a lot, I'm sure. And they come and say, I want a website. Good. It can be a big brand or a small guy. Good, I want a website. Um, and after, no, I just want a website. And it's very complicated to explain to the guy, but it's not like in the real world. I mean, there will be no one who will pass in front and say, oh, it looks nice, I'm going to get in. No, no, on the internet, if you don't shout, no one knows you're here. And uh, um, actually, for example, I know quite well Multiply because of our discussion. I mean, the best merchant of Multiply the one who really makes money are the one who are really organized, who advertise quite a lot, who have an internal team like Kim Store, whatever. I mean, they have people. They are ready to put money on the table. You want good content, you need people to write it. You need people to source the good product. Um, you want good SEO, you need good SEO guy. And at the end of the day, even if in Philippines and in Indonesia, because we just opened Indonesia also, so I have a little uh, view on the market, CPC on Google, on Facebook are still very cheap. It's true. Uh, compared to uh, US or Europe, I mean, our friend or rocket spend a lot of money compared to the local market. But it's nothing compared of what they should have spent if they wanted to launch, to launch the same machine in mature market, like in Europe or, or, or in the US. I mean, it's still cheap, quotes, to build uh, your market in Philippines. It's true, but it's still cheap doesn't mean it's free. It still costs money. So you can have the best idea of the world, uh, get the help of RG or, or, or Jack or whatever. At the end of the day, uh, if you don't have the knowledge, and knowledge is money, I give you an example, um, eCRM. As of today, it's not something very used in, in uh, uh, online uh, business because we are still pioneer, right? But we know, for example, at CatCash, at Cash Cash, sorry, that a big part of our uh, database don't buy. There's people who buy regularly and some don't buy. These people, you have to transform it in buyers. And that it's special technique, special program. Uh, we are coming from country where it's usual to do that, but here it's not still done. So you need specialists in eCRM able to optimize your automatized plan, your, um, there is tools, there is a program, it's quite complicated. So you need to get this guy, this guy costs money, etc., etc. It's just an example, but I'm just saying content is king, yes, but it's also money who, drive the, who will drive the market. And I think a lot of people still think that opening an e-commerce website, it's like opening a shop. No, it's different. Of course, you still sell things to people. You need a uh, product, you need customer support. Yeah, it's like that. But there is over additional cost that you have also to take in consideration. So the conversion funnel is still there. It just, it just works very differently. Uh, it works like an online business everywhere. You want people. In the real world, it's a guy who gives flyer. It's TV advertising, whatever. On online, it's online advertising, SEO, SEM, content, uh, 
uh, social media, etc., etc. Everything knows that type of stuff. But that stuff costs money. That's just my point. Before we conclude this uh, discussion, I, I thought you know it, it would be a rare opportunity since all of you are uh, you know entrepreneurs in your own right uh, to maybe share with the audience uh, you know the lessons learned uh, during your years and building your respective e-commerce uh, businesses. So, um, Oliver, do you want to start with that? I mean, you started Ava.com.ph uh, last year, so it's been over a year. Any lessons that you want to share? For me, the big ones, uh, and this could sound a lot like motherhood statements, but I'd say it'll be people, business model, uh, brand, uh, and the processes. Uh, for me, I would focus a lot uh, on people because it's very specific uh, to this country. Uh, I think, uh, to be very honest, I think the kind of talent that we need to drive e-commerce here uh, and to drive all of these new businesses uh, is still sorely lacking. Uh, I, for me, that's my honest personal assessment. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, it's, it's very, very hard to hire a product manager. Uh, and I'm not talking about the product manager in the consumer goods kind of uh, a sense, right? Now, that you're just working on a brand and you spend on a media plan and you do a promo every now and then with the supermarkets. I'm talking about hardcore product management, people with background in putting together a technical product translating that to a holistic user experience uh, and knowing metrics like customer lifetime value and cost of acquisition and all that stuff. It's very, very hard to find people. Uh, even I did not have that experience. I had to learn it all from scratch. Uh, here, I think in terms of uh, the talent markets, a lot are either hardcore technical uh, people who are really great on the programming and development side or people who are awesome in uh, traditional marketing. Uh, and Filipinos are excellent marketers. Uh, the best marketers from P&G and Unilever uh, are, are all Filipinos. Uh, but it's rare to find people with a mix of both, technical and branding skills. And uh, if you are uh, an entrepreneur here or a startup or if you are looking for uh, you know, a job in e-commerce or in startups, uh, I would highly encourage you to you know, learn both technical branding uh, skills as well because I think you know from a market standpoint it's the biggest gap that we have here and that's the biggest thing I've learned that's very that's very useful uh, Daniel anything uh, you want to add from the Indonesian perspective um, okay just very quickly I think um, to add on I, I agree at, at this stage people are the biggest investment um, and the way we look at and try how we build our team is um, it has to be very clear on everybody who works with together with us in the whole chain that what their purpose is being involved in e-commerce. I mean, if they wake up and drag their feet going to work and they consider work as work, then it's a different ball game right now. If you if you go to the office because you feel you don't even feel that it's a job, and your purpose is very clear. Now our purpose is getting those letters from our um, sellers and buyers. Of, uh, letters of praise. Thank you. I'm making additional three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars to add on to my husband's salary, and now we can fly Cebu Pacific. The whole family is flown for the first time. You know, hundreds and thousands of letters like that is what gets you going. So, if the team and people, back to people, they they have a clear vision of what their purpose is, I think that that will just get over any hurdle that that with logistics, payments, everything. And just you don't you don't get tired. Just keep going. So uh, we try to keep our focus on why you're here, what you're going to do, and it's, well, it goes back to the right people. In my own experience, uh, you know, running Multiply here in, here in the Philippines, uh, the big, one of the biggest surprises for me has been you know, how critical customer support and providing a world-class uh, you know, user and shopping experience really is. It's, it's the department that communicates uh, and touches the customer every day. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I believe that the most important customers, and for us the most important merchants, are the ones who are using your platform, are the ones who come in more than you know once every two months to your site. It's that repeat business because they can become your brand ambassadors or your biggest enemy if you do not provide that <coughs> shopping, that world class uh, experience. So, Fred, any any lessons after running Cash Cash the past couple of years? Um. I mean, Cash Cash or, or Net Booster and other company in, in France. 
I mean, online business, at the end of the day, it's what? It's laptop and people. So you cannot optimize your laptop only with additional mechs. So of course, at the end of the day, you don't manage a laptop, you manage people. So that's definitely the asset. I'm agree with my two colleagues. But um, you know, advertising, we love acronym. Acronym? Acronym? Thanks, guy. Uh, and there is one very famous who say, keep it simple and stupid, kiss. Um, I'm always surprised when I see presentation about what's happening in US, what's happening in Europe, and the augmented reality, and the QR code, and, and what are we talking about? I mean, we are not there at all here. We still need to convince people that if they buy online, they will receive their product. You know, we are still on that step. So I would say the key things for me, it's not to dream about the European or US models, because we are not there. We are far from here. I mean, we can count in years, not in months. Uh, and be focused on the local specificities. Uh, meaning, yes, here, customer support is super important. They are they don't have the batik uh, mentality at all. Uh, so definitely, the customer support is super important. Um, the way you address the people, too formal, they are afraid and they don't buy with you. Too casual, you don't reassure them. They think you're a very, very little stuff, not trustable. If they have a problem, who will talk to, blah, 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 etc., etc. Uh, you still need to evangelize how it works. Click on that, then click on this, then click on that, then it's like this. I mean, this is where we are currently. That doesn't mean people don't buy. No, now the equation proves that people buy. And Filipino can be very, very good and active clients. It's just have, we have to send the right message, the right platform, forget the too complicated platform, Amazon style, whatever, they react very bad to that. You need to keep it very simple because as of today, that's the state where the market is and, and we are not the one who drive the market. The market is the one who gives us the direction or else you need billions to evangelize and as of now, no one has that except maybe Rocket. But uh, I'm just saying at this point, uh, we have to follow the expectation of the, of the market. So my point is you launch a business, be sure to really know who you are talking to. Don't use your US benchmark, UK benchmark, French benchmark. Uh -uh, they work on this market. Use the Kenyan benchmark. I'm sure this one <laughs> makes sense. Definitely, it makes sense here. Or probably some Brazil benchmark. Or Yeah, this one makes sense to our local market. Definitely. And there is business if you respect that. Thank you, Fred. RJ, from your side. Um, as a technical guy, uh, I, I believe there's um, the lessons that you will learn will be uh, all the same in all businesses. But as something unique with the internet is I learned that this is a very um, fast-paced industry. Um, I was a mechanical engineer. When I was a mechanical engineer, the fundamentals that I learned from the college is still the same until now. But here, the thing that I learned six months ago most probably is obsolete now. So it's a continuous, you need continuous learning in this industry. And um, I love, I love doing it. I, I love, uh, learn. you really need to love how um, learning in this, in the internet space. Because yeah, um, three months from now, a year from now, everything will totally be um, different from what it is today. Some very important lessons uh, from, from, from the four panelists, from RJ, uh, it is really uh, learning how to unlearn and then relearn uh, and loving what you do. From Fred, quite a number of things. Money came out a lot uh, and of course, of course, people, customer support, uh, providing a great customer experience. And from, uh, from Daniel, again, uh, finding the right uh, talent to, uh, to, to, you know, for the functions in, your, in, your, in running your business. And, and I guess the common thread between the four of you is really the role of people and, and finding the right talent uh, to run this business. So um, I think this has been a very informative session. And Fred, you want to add something? Yeah, just add something because I, I'm agree, in fact, uh, with what you were saying earlier. Because when Rocket arrived, it's a small world, the digital industry, right? 
Uh, some people say that it's a very good one. Some people say, oh, la, la, what's happening, etc. Actually, I agree with my colleague of Ava. I think, for me, it's a very good thing, definitely. Uh, because if someone can evangelize the market, it's definitely people with this type of muscle. So uh, I, I made some joke about it, but for me, it's a very good thing. I mean, the market is big and very space for everyone. So definitely, we should be all supportive of the initiative of Rocket because they can drive the market behind them. And I, and I think that's true. Uh in e-commerce as well as you know, the digital industry for that matter because whether it's advertising spend on, on the internet or whether it's e-commerce, uh, we still have a relatively small share of the market. So the more players there are, the more, that, the more players we evangelize, the more uh, people who do you know, converting uh, how, they, how they spend their time, how they advertise, and how they shop from offline to online, then, then we will all win in, in the end. So I guess uh, to conclude, we are certainly in the early days of e-commerce here in uh, Southeast Asia and the Philippines. Uh, and I couldn't think of a better time uh, to be in this business as, as, as today. And I think the theme from the whole afternoon is that we are all very bullish and feel very strongly. And to borrow Daniel's words, let's not screw it up. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for joining in this panel. And uh, if we have time, if there are any questions from the audience, we'd be happy to uh, take them. Yes, can you approach uh, microphone? Hi, I'm Vanessa from Zestair. So um, just agreeing to what uh, Fred mentioned about, um, let's use Kenya as an example, and not look at the US and the Europe in terms of uh, e-commerce and yeah we're definitely on the birth stage true that the airlines are earning a lot of millions of pesos over the internet but one big question which I think you guys failed if not uh, not didn't mention in about e-commerce is we discussed about payments and uh, delivery or logistics um, what about connectivity I mean this is e-commerce, right? So how are you, we have friends from Globe, from Smart, and from PLDT here, but how are you addressing uh, the lack of connectivity in the Philippines? I mean, we have, we need to sell to Hulo, uh, us airlines, and we're dying out there because of the lack of connectivity. You guys, you're growing, you're expanding. How are you going around this issue? Fred, you wanna take that? Travel is a big, um, okay, when you set up a business, especially in a pioneer industry like this one, uh, I mean, set up a business is complicated by itself. But in a pioneer industry like this one, it's more complicated. So my mantra is I'm not going to punch my head against the wall on what I cannot control. So, yes, if the connectivity could be higher, meaning more people on internet, which is more potential client with us, I'd be very happy. But the problem is, I cannot do anything on that. So, at the end of the day, I think, or uh, I prefer to spend time, energy, be bullish on what I can do. I can talk to the bank, yeah, that I can do something. I can talk to the logistic, I can do something. I think at the end of the day, I was not here this morning, but my friend told me, uh, the speech of, of smart uh, president. Um, it seems that this massive machine, these big players start to see that there is definitely an interest for them to increase the size of the uh, pipeline and to make it more efficient because at the end of the day it's money to them. So I guess it's not us who will do anything, it's us who will do anything because they'll see that at the end of the day there is money. So if there is money, they'll do something for it. And I agree with you. Uh, at the end of the day, there is, what, 35 million Filipino, in fact, less. But anyway, let's take 35. If we could have 90, uh, who would say no? Um, I think we have time for just one more question. Yeah, somebody from. Hello, uh, Eric Nolasco with Publicis Jimenez Basic. Um, I guess my question is uh, more directed towards uh, the Sulit.com and Cash Dash. I've noticed um, 
You guys have a lot of ATL ads as well. I think Sulit has a TVC. Um, I guess what sort of media spending do you have compared to, I guess, digital versus ATL and how successful has the ATL campaigns been towards actually driving e-commerce? Um, technically, the, the ATL uh, is spending um, is uh, a lot of times more than our digital spending now. Um, the reason that we jump on the ATL campaign is with what um, maybe uh, we have the advantage of having uh, an investor like MIH, which also um, invested in Multiply, is that they have the data in the different countries that's similar in the Philippines. When we talk of Kenya, we, we talk of Lithuania, um, countries in Russia, um, they're seeing, uh, they have samples, they have the data of what an ATL campaign can do to a business. So we use that data. For us, uh, technically, we're somehow experimenting, but because of this data, we now know what, what is the potential to happen. Um, the good thing for us is that we really didn't expect so much from the ATL campaign in terms of the direct traffic. But for the past uh, how many months now, uh, uh, we are now in the fourth month of running the ATL campaign, is it's, it almost doubled our, our traffic. So in um, terms of the ROI, is still not as, as efficient as a digital, but in terms of tapping the mass uh, adoption of the business, uh, we really hit that curve. And we know we, now at, uh, we are now at the inflection point where we, if we hit the mass adoption, it will shoot up. So we're looking to, to reach that point. Uh, actually, we just closed a, a new founding round of 100 million peso with our investors. So uh, ETL is one of our um, direction. But to be honest, what RG is doing, it's pioneer. I mean, if you go in Europe or US, once again, you will have uh, data, analytic, uh, ROI about uh, offline to online. Uh, the problem is no one has this data except the guy who do it. Uh, so as of today, we stay, once again, keep it simple and stupid, we stay close to the basic. We know that conversion online to online, it's cheaper, it's efficient. On this one, we have a lot of data. We know exactly how it's generated. We even have data now about our social media activity. We know how many fans we attract and at the end, how much they buy and how much they spend. I think there is not a lot of company who have this data currently in the country. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm sure the, the move of, of uh, Sulit and is, is, is the very good one. Um, in country like Philippines, the rate that you can have on TV is amazing. Uh, I think uh, any telenovela on GMA or ABS uh, have the percentage of reach that the final soccer uh, have in Europe. So it still figures that make dream any European channel. So, but you need the money to do this test because it costs a lot, I'm sure. And <laughs> if you don't have that money, you stay safe and you spend where you know it will bring you back something. Thank you for the question. I don't think we have any more time. So thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Jack Madrid and the gentlemen, Oliver, Daniel, Fred.